Hey guys, Mike Eccles back. Well, it's 2021 and you're thinking about a career change and you want to figure out what's your best approach to getting into the cybersecurity field. As you know, cybersecurity is a very lucrative field and it's an awesome career. I mean, the missions of organizations that are trying to stop cybercrime are ones that everybody wants to take part in. And so if you're looking for a new career in this new year, there's no better time to consider a career in cybersecurity. Uh, U.S. businesses and all around the world, uh, governments are spending money to pursue cyber criminals and to prevent cyber crime. So with that said, um, there's a demand for qualified security professionals and it's soaring. They've said by 2021, 2022, there's going to be a 1 million person shortage of cyber professionals. And you know what that means? Opportunity. And so we want to take advantage of the opportunities. So in this video, I want to talk about six potential certifications that you can take that will help you move ahead in the cybersecurity field. So the first one let's discuss is Microsoft Technology Associate, the MTA. Uh, it's a security fundamentals course. Uh, of the certifications featured uh, in this video, the MTA security certification of fundamentals is going to be the entry level one one uh, of a bunch of certifications that will help you get into the field and move forward once you're in. Uh, it's typically aimed at high schoolers and college students as well as those in the workforce who are looking to change careers. The MTA Security Fundamentals recognizes uh, the knowledge of core security principles that go across all of these certifications, as well as the basics of operating systems, networks, and software security. The goal is to achieve uh, a passing score on this exam. Uh, the exam costs about $127. To improve your chances of achieving the MTA Security Fundamental Certification, Microsoft recommends that you have some hands-on experience with Windows servers, Windows-based networks, firewalls, and other common security products. In some cases, you can get some of this know-how experience from YouTube. So number two, uh, the ISACA CSX Cybersecurity Fundamentals Certificate. Uh, folks in the security industry knows that ISACA um, is one of the best uh, certification bodies across the world and most people know them for their certified information security manager certification. Uh, the CSX certified fundamental cer certificate is relatively new to ISACA in their certification program um, but it was designed to fill the entry-level niche generally geared towards recent postgraduate and those seeking career changes uh, this certification covers five cybersecurity related changes uh, in demand. That's concepts, architecture principles, networks, systems application, and data security. Uh, it also looks at incident response and security and evolving technologies. The single exam cost is about $150, and a certificate doesn't expire or require periodic recertification like many of these other certifications. So number three of these certifications that I'm recommending is the CompTIA Security Plus, perhaps the most well-known entry-level security certification uh, in the field. Uh, it has an array of security and information assurance topics that you'll study and you'll learn. Again, these topics will help you move through other certifications and they are a staple for most jobs related to privacy or cybersecurity. Um, they include studies on information network security, threats, vulnerabilities, access control, host and data security. The certification meets U.S. Department of Defense Directive 8570-01M. And it's an important item for those looking for IT security 
programs that are going to help them get better jobs if they work in the U.S. government. CompTIA recommends that the candidates have two years of relevant experience and achieve the Network Plus credential before they actually take the Security Plus exam. It costs about $311 um, and the exam is somewhere midway between the least and most expensive of the certification exams. The Security Plus um, jobs will lead you to um, security administrator, security specialist, network administrators, and other types of jobs along that line. Number four is the GIAC, Information Security Fundamentals Certification. The GIAC gears GISF towards system administrators, management, information security types of positions, like many of the others. Uh, it's a solid overview of information security uh, programs and principles, defense and depth techniques, risk management, security policies, and also business continuity. Um, the GISF exams are similar to those of the CONTIA Security Plus, and the GISF is considered to be a little more challenging, um, but if you've passed the others, you will probably be able to pass this one. The GIAC exam is generally required um, uh, or requiring that the person taking the test uh, applies knowledge and problem solving skills. So hands on experience is important here also. If you take a SANS training course and then sit for the GS. Uh, GISF exam, the exam costs about $680. Um, if you take the exam without completing the other training, uh, referred to as a certification attempt, um, the GIAC bumps the exam cost to a whopping $1,200. The GIAC includes two practice exams and certification attempt package. Uh, so if you want to pursue that one, expect to spend a little bit more than on the other entry level exams. So my number five is the ISC Squared's System Security Certified Practitioner, the SSCP. You're probably all very familiar with the CISSP, also administered by ISC Squared, but it's more at an advanced level. The C, the SSCP will be a great certification before you're able to meet the requirements of the CISSP. The uh, SSCP uh, prepares you for such jobs as systems administrator, network security engineer, security administrator, and would typically start at the junior level if you don't already have a technical or engineering related information technology experience. To achieve the SSCP, you must pass a single exam that includes questions that span seven common bodies of knowledge. Uh, the CBK, Common Bodies, Bodies of Knowledge. And the domains include access control, security operations, administration, risk identification, monitoring, analysis, incident response, and recovery, cryptology, network and communication security, and systems and application security. So as you can see, it gives you a great overview and it gives you some great skill set related to cybersecurity that gives you an opportunity to pursue many types of opportunities uh, for these government and private sector organizations that are searching for you. So to ensure that you have sufficient hands-on security knowledge before taking the exam, ISC recommends that you attend training courses and you say like, you're like, where do I get these hands-on training courses? Well, a lot of conferences have hands-on training courses and workshops. There are also meetups in pretty much every community where you can seek out and they will help you to understand what it feels like, what it looks like, and what it smells like. The exam cost for this ISC squared exam is typically about $250. Uh, and they provide a variety of study resources to 
uh, you and you can purchase those on their website. That's ISC squared. So my number six is the SISM exam test. Uh, it tests IT professionals and it validates their expertise and experience in the following domains. The information security governance, information risk management, information security program development and management, and information security incident management. CISM focuses on people who are already working in some capacity in IT or InfraSec. And what they want to do is help you gain knowledge uh, that can advance your career. Eligibility for the test requires five or more years of experience in InfoSec management. Experience waivers are available for a maximum of two years. That means you have to have had at least two years in information security management. The exam consists of 150 multiple choice questions that cover the exam content created from the most recent content analysis. Students up to um, study and they take this exam for up to four hours to complete uh, the exam and get their certification if they pass. Uh, certification holders can earn up to $150,000. So you can see why it is popular and why people covet this certification. Uh, the SISM body provides review questions, answers, and explanation databases um, for a 12-month subscription uh, and of course you pay for that. So with all of these certifications, whether it's entry level or whether it is for an advancement in your career and you're taking the SISM, it is very important that you study and use the resources that are provided to you. In some cases, just knowing how to take the test will make the difference. Uh, you wouldn't want to take these exams or try to get these certifications and not pass and have to pay to take them again because you missed five or ten points because you didn't go to a boot camp or you thought that you could get off cheap by looking at a YouTube video. For most of these certifications, you really do need to have some extreme study. Uh, it's passable, it's doable, and they will advance your career. When there are 100 resumes on the desk, the hiring managers are typically looking for these certifications. Again, this is Mike Eccles, and I will talk to you soon.